Let's rewrite another bad political romance. Episode two of Paul Ryan's relationship with and lies about his relationship with a woman who is not his wife. Paul Ryan fell in love with this woman long before he met his wife and continued his love affair with her until April of this year. He had to drop his beloved then for two reasons. One, he was being considered for the Republican vice presidential nomination. And two, Catholics became highly critical of Paul Ryan's very public entanglement with this woman. Ayn Rand was dead by the time Paul Ryan discovered her and fell in love with her through her books, Atlas Shrugged, The Fountainhead, and others. She became, by his own account, the most influential person in his life. The reason I got involved in public service, um, by and large, if I had to credit one thinker, one person, it would be Ayn Rand. As I reported in this space in April, Catholics United issued a statement saying, we question why Ryan, as a self-professed Catholic, would put the teachings of ultra-capitalist Ayn Rand, of whom he has spoken glowingly, before the teachings of Jesus and the Church. And of course, that was enough for Ryan to not only drop Ayn Rand, but to start lying about her, lying about his relationship with her, lying about what he loved about her. He suddenly started saying, quote, I reject her philosophy, it's an atheist philosophy. Today, in a breathtakingly lazy interview conducted by the homework-averse Brit Hume, who very convincingly played dumb about Ryan and Rand, Ryan confidently lied about his relationship with her once again. What is your view of Ayn Rand? How, 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 are you an Ayn Rand disciple? No, how does that charge? I really enjoyed her novels, Atlas Shrugged in particular. It triggered my interest in economics. That's where I got into studying economics. That's why I wanted to study the whole field of economics. I later in life learned about what her philosophy was. It's called objectivism. It's something I completely disagree with. It's an atheistic philosophy. Oh, okay. So later in life, he learned about what her philosophy was, even though earlier in life he had been reading about her philosophy in her novels and that's what triggered his interest in economics that's kind of weird because Ayn Rand's philosophy was very well known even to people who never read her books she was on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson as a guest where Johnny actually bumped Buster Crab one night just to let Ayn Rand keep talking Really, Buster Crab. She talked to Johnny about being an atheist. And she said this to Mike Wallace. You are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life, our Judeo-Christian religion, our modified government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will. Other reviews have said that you scorn churches and the concept of God. Are these accurate criticisms? Uh, yes. You would have to be pretty dense to be an Ayn Rand fan and not know that Ayn Rand was an atheist, as Ryan is now pretending. Now, like Ryan, I read Ayn Rand when I was in high school. In fact, she was assigned reading in my Catholic high school, where none of the priests were afraid of exposing us to atheist writers and philosophers, including some they and we agreed with. I enjoyed reading her novels then, too, but unlike Ryan, I didn't believe she was a better moral or political philosopher than Jesus Christ. And by the way, most atheists I know find Jesus Christ a better moral philosopher than Ayn Rand. Only for a politician is Ayn Rand's atheism a strike against her. And only a politician would dream of claiming to have been once an Ayn Rand fan and not know anything about her philosophy or that she was an atheist. Only a politician would try to pretend that he learned those things about a Ayn Rand, quote, later in life. Well, let's see. If he grew up reading Ayn Rand, as he has said, later in life would be what? In college? In his 20s? when he was working in Congress as a Republican staffer, or would later in life be, oh, I don't know, April of this year? Is that when he's claiming he just discovered that her philosophy 
was, what her philosophy was, and that she was an atheist, because later in Paul Ryan's life, in fact, in 2005, he actually wrote a speech about Ayn Rand that he then delivered at a meeting of the Atlas Society, a group of Rand worshipers, all of whom were well-versed in Rand's philosophy and her atheism. I grew up on Ayn Rand, that's what I tell people. I, uh, you know, everybody does their soul searching and, and trying to find out who they are and what they believe and you learn about yourself. Uh, I grew up reading Ayn Rand and it taught me quite a bit about who I am and what my value systems are and what my beliefs are. So there he is in 2005, later in life, as a congressman, sounding like an expert on Ayn Rand. But according to today's testimony to Brit Hume, he never really knew what her philosophy was until sometime later in life than that, I guess. It must have been later than 2005 because he said this in 2009. It doesn't surprise me that sales of The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged have surged lately with the Obama administration coming in uh, because it's that kind of thinking, that kind of writing that is sorely needed right now. And I think a lot of people would observe that we are right now living in an Ayn Rand novel, metaphorically speaking. But more to the point is this. The issue that is under assault, the attack on democratic capitalism, on individualism and freedom in America, is an attack on the moral foundation of America. And Ayn Rand, more than anyone else, did a fantastic job of explaining the morality of capitalism, the morality of individualism. And this, to me, is what is matters most. So there he is praising Ayn Rand's morality. There's Paul Ryan in 2009, still citing Ayn Rand as the moral philosopher who guides his thinking about capitalism and government. But Fox News viewers didn't see that video, and they never will see that video of Paul Ryan for two reasons. One, it would involve Brit Hume or someone working for Brit, Brit Hume today to have done some homework, and two, Brit Hume's job nowadays, after a distinguished career in real journalism elsewhere, is to help Fox News help Paul Ryan become the next Republican Vice President of the United States who gives orders to the President. Now, during our next commercial break, which is a moment away, I offer this thought experiment. Imagine Brit Hume interviewing a Democratic candidate for Vice President of the United States whose moral and political guiding light was a Russian atheist. What would Hannity say? What would O'Reilly say? What would Sarah Palin say? If Barack Obama tried to dismiss and rewrite a lifelong infatuation with the Russian atheist the way Paul Ryan just did on Fox News, what would they say? Just imagine, imagine what they would do to Barack Obama to the, for that. Imagine, imagine what the Fox News crew would say about him. Imagine. 